Hey everybody, my name is Chris Ree, and today we are continuing our tutorial series A to Z in Reason Studios. In this video, we will be covering the equalizer. No, not that equalizer. We're talking about Reason stock equalizers. The EQ has grown by leaps and bounds from its original simple bass and treble knob EQ all the way up until SSL modeled EQ, which we can find today in Reason's main mixer. Let's jump into Reason so we can check out equalization. Okay guys, so I'm here in Reason. I have a file open where we have some different instruments and we're gonna be able to check out Reason stock EQ. So the first version of EQ that you had available to you was the mixer EQ in this OG mixer. Now this mixer is still available and I like to use it inside of combinators in order to be able to separate my different files and still apply effects to those uh, instruments that are inside of a combinator. So of course we now have a main mixer that Reason has given us their design is a lot better than the OG mixer, but there's still some use case for that mixer, i.e. using it inside of a combinator or using it to layer out many, many different instruments and send them all through one mix channel. So right here I have a piano which is being very heavily affected by its EQ. You can hear the difference when I turn Turn the EQ on and off. So this original EQ is really just straight to the point. It just kind of just boosts those two bands, either treble or bass, and we don't really have a way to tell which frequencies are being affected exactly. We pretty much just have to use our ears, and if it sounds good, if it sounds like what we want, then that's pretty much what we have. So it was very limited in this equalization in the beginning, but we also were giving the two-band perk Q parametric equalizer and this gave us two different bands that we can use so what i've applied to this eq i've applied a bass uh instrument to that eq and we're going to just affect this bass patch with that eq now keep in mind this bass patch actually has its own eq inside of the combinator um, but we're just using this as a use case example so you can see how that parametric eq works Okay, so that is another EQ that you have available to use inside of Reason. And maybe again, just like the previous EQ, it really just affects whatever frequency range that you put it inside of. But where you get some versatility with this is you can actually change the frequencies that are being affected. It's very small and it's very kind of hard to see to get real good details but you can quickly boost some low or you can quickly boost a high or you can quickly cut a mid. Uh, you can make some quick adjustments to a sound by using the two band parametric EQ. Now things get a little more uh, advanced as we continue on and Reason gets even better and develops the EQ module. So Reason's EQ gets a little better as they come out with the M-Class Equalizer. The M-Class Equalizer gives you both shelf with bass and treble, and it gives you some parametric where you can apply cuts and boosts to the mid-range or to the upper mid-range or to the lower mid-range, right? You have some versatility that you can use with the M-Class Equalizer. 
Let's apply some EQ to this Rhodes patch that's being played. First, they've given us a low cut, which means it will cut out all of the frequencies 30 hertz and below, which really helps to get rid of those frequencies that we can't even hear and sometimes muddies up our mix. We can cut out those frequencies below 30 hertz immediately. So without the EQ, the road is a little more full, but with the EQ and some of those highs boosted, it just gives it a little more clarity and a little more character. Next, after the M-Class equalizer, we now have access to the channel equalizer. And actually what came before that was the main mixers equalizer, but we're gonna save that one for last. Reason most recently in Reason 11 has allowed us to use the channel equalizer, which can be found in its main mixer. We can now apply this channel equalizer to any instrument inside of the Reason rack. So we've applied one to this uh, drum, actually. I think that's the drum. So here's our kick drum. Let's get rid of some of those highs. So Bell, of course, turns the curve from being a shelf where you have a shelf control into a specific parametric bell and almost creates like a curve. So we don't want to turn Bell on. We want to just cut out all of those highs. So I've added a channel EQ to our kick drum. Now this is a live recorded kick drum and it has some bleed um, from some of the other instruments. And well, there's a couple different ways we could get rid of that. Um, I kind of want to leave the character in there and just basically take out some of those highs. So we're going to add a low pass filter. We're going to turn that low pass filter on and then we'll adjust as we need to in order to get rid of those highs.
definitely a lot more from the stock original mixer, from the parametric equalizer, and even from the M-Class equalizer. Just gives you a lot more room to work with your sound. Uh, Reason's website actually has a, a, a slogan on there and it says, use your ears. And that's where you kind of lack out here is you lack the visual. Uh, you really have to use your ears and really your understanding of how mixing frequencies work in order to use this channel equalizer. Reason has not let us down. They've actually given us a spectrum analyzer inside of the main mixers EQ window. So we're gonna check that out now. With Reason's new Spectrum Analyzer, you can actually see the waveforms of the music as you affect them before and after your EQ. So as you apply cuts, as you apply boost, you can see how the music is being affected in the waveform. And as of course you see, you get a nice big window that you can stretch out to use and really dial in those frequencies very accurately. We have a low pass filter and a high pass filter, uh, which means we can basically shave off the high end or shave off the low end of our sound. When we turn the equalizer on, we can see that there are these points on the different frequency ranges. These points are color coordinated with what you will find on the main mixer. So as you can see, here's our red shelf and here is our red shelf in the mixer. Here's our green point and here is our green point, the high mid frequencies. Here's our blue and there's the blue. Here's our gray or black. Here's our gray and our black. And our shelves, of course, the low pass filter and the high pass filter are represented by orange knobs and you can see those as they are added into the equalizer. So I like to give a high pass filter to most of the sounds just to cut off some of those lower frequencies, which really we can't hear and kind of muddy up the mix. And then for the frequencies that don't need any highs, I like to cut those highs out of those sounds as well. What that is doing is called making room. So we want to make room for the instruments to fit where they need to fit. So if we have a very bright instrument, then we don't need to have so much bass for that instrument because that's not where that instrument shines. We want to give that instrument its range of frequency. So we want to cut that range of frequency out from other instruments in order so that it can shine through. And we do this for all of the different instruments until we have what is we call equalization. That's the purpose of EQ is to actually shape the sound and shape the levels of the frequencies in order so that we get a good mix of the sound coming through our music. When we turn on E mode, E mode allows us to get a little more precise in how we actually dial in the frequencies. So it will make our bell curve a lot sharper and not affect so much of the neighboring frequencies around that frequency. So let's take a look, for example, at this organ. This organ sound had a lot of low frequencies that we really wasn't hearing, really wasn't picking up, but they were there. It's a lot of energy here in this low frequency, but we don't need it. So 
we're just gonna cut that out. This is our sweet spot for that organ. We want to be able to hear those frequencies coming in in that mid range. So we don't need a lot of highs and we don't need a lot of lows. Some things to remember when it comes to using EQ. One thing that you want to remember is to always use your ears. Uh, it helps to have the spectrum analyzer, but nothing beats a good pair of ears. So get some good headphones, maybe some good monitors. And when you are applying those EQ changes, listen back to them and make sure that you understand what is affecting the sound when you change certain EQ parameters and certain dB levels. Also, make sure to try to use the dry and wet features if they are available for that EQ. If you can bypass the EQ and then turn the EQ back on, that will help you to get a A-B comparison between using the EQ and not using the EQ. Another thing we wanna remember is to always cut first and boost second. If there's a sound that seems like you're not hearing enough of it or you don't like the way it sounds, it's better to cut a frequency than it is to just go boosting a bunch of frequencies. A lot of times, instead of adding more bass, we might just need to take some bass away from a different instrument and allow room uh, so that that instrument can come through with the bass or whatever it is, the sound that you're trying to fix or the sound that you're trying to accomplish. I hope that you like this video and if you did, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video. If you really liked it, make sure that you can share it with one of your friends so that they can see the video. And if you're looking for more tutorials such as this one, then please make sure to subscribe because we are only five letters in to this A to Z tutorial series and I have no clue what I'm gonna do for Z yet, but I am eager and excited to go through this journey with you guys. Thanks for watching and until the next video, peace.